Again, this is the two, the two sides of the coin. In the middle, all employees, every single employee, every single person on the planet has aspirations. Everyone, no exceptions. For the happy being miserable, it's, it's below the surface a bit, but they've still got it. For the happy being mediocre, you've got you to work a bit to get it. For the people that have already have been missed, it's, it's easy. But every single human being, regardless of where they're at in life, regardless of how old they are, regardless of where they are, they've got aspirations. I watched people on the tram this morning. I'm coming up Burke Street on the tram and I watched people and I can tell that a lot of those people are thinking about their aspirations. You ever observe people? A lot of people daydream. A lot of people think, if only. Well, what we're about, those of us that are embracing, enhancing the guess what we're about, is helping them turn dreams into reality. So it starts with the aspiration. And that's what comes out of the discussion about what's worth celebrating, what could be better, defining moments, gifts, helping people identify their talents, using someone like Mike to help you more if you need to. However it is, to uncover people's promise, you know, their, their innate, what they could do and then help them to deliver on it. It all starts with that. And then we can have appreciation and accountability conversations. Now, for those of you that have read the book, you will know because you go back to it often. This is on page 165 in the book. And for other people, we have to, you know, we sometimes, I put posters up around the place, you know, we remind people because it's very easy once you've got a PPP and you've had all the conversations that we've talked about and you've, you've got people starting to embrace the foundations, you can have conversations. There are two kinds of conversations to have. One is you have a conversation when things are going really well. So I, I, Stephanie works for me. I say, Stephanie, how nice to see you. Wonderful. How are things going? And Stephanie says, Boss, you wouldn't believe how, th how well things are going. We are, we've, in, in the department, we've just, we, you know, we've done all this, and we just, we're going so well that we're dangerous. It's unbelievable how well things are going. And I say, Stephanie, terrific, love it. Here. How does that make you feel? Good. <laughs> and, and, you know, she'll say good or, or you know, I, I, when people get used to this idea, they often say, you know, all sorts of things. You know, one lady said once, it makes me feel like I'm, 16 or 17 again. I said, really? She said, no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> but anyway, you know, you do get people to give you emotion. <laughs> and when they give you emotion, what it does is anchor them. And that's important. I say to Mike, oh, I'd love you to see you, Mike. How are you going? Mike, we've been working on something really tough lately, and I know that you've been making some progress, but how, how are you going at the moment? He says, oh, boss, you wouldn't believe it. We are just, we are killing it. It's just going so well. In fact, we bought a bell as well, and we're ringing it as much as Wavestar is. He says, I say, fantastic, Mike. How does that make you feel? Mike says, makes me feel... Brilliant. Brilliant. I say, well, you know, wouldn't it be great to feel brilliant? about a whole lot, a whole lot of stuff. So hang on to that one, Mike. So it's just a conversation, but it anchors people, because I want to teach Mike over time to feel brilliant about a lot, of, a lot of things. So that's the appreciation conversation. It's very simple, and what I teach people in the system is, do not, under any circumstances, say anything else. Just ask questions. Now, this is the tough bit for some people when they, get, when they start to use the system, they want to get, in, get in, involved. Don't get involved, just ask questions. Just say, how does that make you feel? And, and wait. And when they respond, you respond enthusiastically, saying, well, how cool is that? Keep feeling whatever, or whatever, but don't say anything else. So the key to these techniques is the questions you ask. And the reason for that is when, when it's an accountability conversation, it's a little tougher. And so there are four questions for that. So I walk up to Stephanie, and I say, g'day, Stephanie, how are you going? Lovely to see you. She hasn't got a smile on her face this time. She's got a frown on her face. In fact, everything's looking dark and gloomy. I say, Steph, what's, what's happening? She says, I just, I'm just so sick of Aiden and his team. I just cannot, I just don't want to go back into that, that bloke's room ever again. And, and, and as far as, and, and as for Amy, well, she, I, I, if she jumped out of the building today, I wouldn't care. You know, I'm kidding. 
But this is the kind of stuff that people say when they're up when they're upset, right? They say, if I see that that Trevor guy, uh, that guy again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna slip my wrists. Now, what do most managers do when they get this kind of feedback? They try to fix it. Well, don't do that. Or deny it. Or deny it. What else do they do? Ignore it, simplify it. There's all sorts of stuff. You know, you, you can always tell a fake leader. When someone asks them a question, they give an answer. Don't do that. Just get good at asking questions. So she's given me all this stuff. She's, she's put heaps of stuff on Aiden. She reckons Amy's no good. I mean, Stephanie worked together, by the way. <laughs> so you know I'm kidding. But she gives me all this stuff. Now, what I could do is a, as a leader, I can get involved in, in, in with you, but what, I don't do that. Because I want to teach Stephanie how to be accountable for her own intentions, her own feelings and her own thoughts. And so all I do is ask a question. I say, what happened? Now she will know because we've done the PPP. People get to know that when you ask these questions, what you're meaning is, is the plan. I say, what happened? She might say, well, what do you mean? People do get angry sometimes. I say, what I mean is, we had a plan, you know, your PPP, it's your piece of the quilt. You had that. What do you need to do to get back on track? I say. She goes, well, how, how can I get back on track when, you know, Aiden doesn't pull his weight and, you know, Amy's hopeless and the company's going, you know, and people can go into convulsion sometimes. I remain unmoved. I don't want to show you any disrespect. I'm just asking you questions. I say, what do you know? I might repeat it. What do you need to do to get back on track? Because the PPP is the track. It's a track that you wrote in your own hand. You did it yourself. I might have helped you or your boss helped you or someone helped you, but you wrote it yourself. This is from your heart. You wrote it down from experiences of your life. You put things on the paper that you bled for, things that mattered in your life. So it's personal. It's designed that way. So when I say to you, what do you need to get back on track? You know, what often happens is, well, well, yeah, I, I really need to do such and such and such and such, and I really need to stop complaining about Aiden and get on with my life. And I say, is there anything I can do to help you? Question number three. And you might say, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I will say, just to be sure, I will say anything else. So four questions. What happened? What do you need to do to get back on track? Is there anything I can do to help you? Anything else? I promise you, if you just ask these four questions, magic happens. Do not say anything else. Because people get used to being accountable. So you're responsible, Stephanie, for your intentions, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. I'm not responsible. You're responsible. You're not responsible for what Aiden does or doesn't do. You're not responsible for Aiden's intentions. You're not responsible for his feelings. You're not responsible for his thoughts. You're not responsible for his actions. You're not responsible for what Amy thinks, intends, feels, or does. You're not. You're responsible for what you do. You're responsible for what you intend, what you feel, what you think. This is why my marriage works, but it's also why your relationships can work. It's also why your employees can have the most profound boss because it's not about you it's about them yes it's not about what's in it for you it's about what's in me for you it's about teaching people to be accountable I'm gonna have this conversation with Stephanie three times because I believe in baseball rules so I, I go back to my office and I make a note see Stephanie three o'clock on Thursday Now, of course, staff get used to this. They know it's planned after a while. But I come, oh, I say, Stephanie, how are you? Lovely to see you again. How are things going? She says, boss, nothing's, nothing's got any worse. She said, in fact, people, people are just driving me insane. Now, I could easily get emotionally involved, but I'm not, I can't be responsible for what she intends or she, she feels or these things. I can only be responsible for those things for myself. I say, well, what happened? Well, you know. What do you need to do to get back on track? Is there anything I can do to help you? Anything else? I'm going to have this conversation with you three times. 
The fourth time, I'm going to help you leave because you become one of the happy being miserable or happy being I'm going to help you go this way, not this way. It's not that you're not a nice person, it's just you don't fit. Because if you can't get personal accountability after three conversations like this in the right environment and the right culture, then you don't belong. Does this make sense to you? Now, a lot of people won't have this conversation, which is why we've got people that shouldn't be there working for you. As I said right at the start of today, it's not that they're not nice people, it's not that they're nice fit. You know that I think every person has their place. It's just not at your place. So you need to help them move out. But if you just have the, ask these questions and have these conversations, you will find people learn self-accountability really quick. Because the positive thing about this is, and you know this, Andrew, from years of doing this, is that what happens is people respond positively and then you, you very rarely ever get to the fourth conversation. This is the good news. What do you think? Can you use this, Aiden? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone think they can't do this? Isn't it? I take a risk. I've asked this in seminars all over the place. I say, can you, can, is anyone that can't do this? No one puts their hand up. Not ever might. No one's ever put their hand up. Because all you've got to do is ask questions. Now, what happens is you go back to the workplace and you think, well, maybe I could finesse this a bit, you know? I know he said don't do anything else and I'll, I'll just add some stuff. Well, don't do that. <laughs> Trust me, I've been doing this with people for 20 years. You only interfere in their process if you add stuff. You just need to ask questions. Can you do this, Richard? Definitely. Blokes down on the, on the, tra on the train line down there? Yeah, needs to be done. You've got to have this first. Must have a PPP. I don't care if it's on the back of a coaster. And that's maybe some of the, um, you know, the volunteers at the MCG and, uh, and other, other folk, you can have it on the back of a coaster. Doesn't it? it doesn't have to be sophisticated. I just know this. Every single human being has an aspiration. Every single one. And when we help them to, and we help them lead their lives towards fulfilling that aspiration, they will help us achieve our aspirations. And when we have conversations, appreciate them when they do well, help them to hold themselves to account when they don't, magic happens.